Um, hey, Saddam. Hey, uh, Matumba and everyone else um, listening to me. Um, yeah, so let me start with Pio's interview. I'm always eager to hear Pio speak and he never disappoints, you know, in his delivery. And I don't know if people have actually noticed um, anytime Pio is being interviewed on TV, the number of ads, you know, that are shown is crazy because, you know, these businesses know the number of people who will be watching. And that goes to show you the influence, you know, Pio has in Nigeria today. So one thing I love about his speeches um, is the fact that he simplifies his talking points, you know, no matter how complex. And um, he doesn't take a genius to understand the message that, you know, he's trying to pass across. And he takes someone who has a lot of experience and, you know, in-depth knowledge to be able to break down, you know, such complex issues, you know, in that manner. For example, he touched on the economic situation of the country, which is what I would actually like to focus on um, today to drive home the point that, you know, Peter Obi is literally our only hope to prevent the collapse of our country. Um, he has always talked about the urgency of moving from, you know, consumption to production. And I feel like Nigerians don't really understand, you know, the dire situation that we are in currently. So this, you know, these criminals, these political criminals have stolen the country dry. And instead of investing it in the country, you know, they hide it in foreign banks and, you know, they purchase luxury properties in developed countries. You know, for example, the, the Shei Tinubu, you know, issue that we're discussing today. You know, things are so bad that, you know, according to Chris Ngege, Nigeria cannot even afford to pay salaries next month, except, you know, the first subsidy is removed or we continue to print more money. And we all know that, you know, Buhari's government has walked back this subsidy removal and has basically dumped that problem, you know, on the laps of the incoming government. So the next best option is to continue to print money or, you know, you, we move from consumption to production. And what happens when Nigeria continues to print money? You know, you see a situation where the inflation rates, you know, would continue to rise, you know, prices of goods will go up, the currency would, you know, continue to lose its value, and you start to see scarcity of, you know, basic goods. And all of these will then result in economic collapse and, you know, political chaos. And if you want to look at a good example, you see the situation, you know, in Venezuela. Um, so Venezuela is what you would call a petro state, you know, basically it's a country, you know, whose government deeply relies on the revenue from oil. And, you know, you see a situation, a situation where the economic and political powers are highly concentrated um, in an elite manner corruption and you know due to the heavy reliance on oil you know other sectors such as agriculture and manufacturing you know start to suffer and i'm sure at this point you can see the similarities between um, venezuela and nigeria um, and what happened you know in venezuela when oil price crashed you know we i don't know if we all remember seeing long lines of venezuelans you know waiting to buy basic goods like milk and bread um, you know, due to the hyperinflation and also the depreciation in their country's um, currency. So let me just, you know, let, at this point, let me channel Pio and, you know, call out some important statistics. So in 2012, Venezuela's inflation rate was 21%. In 2014, it was 62%. In 2018, it was 65,374%. So let's look at Nigeria's inflation rates in the last three years. In 2020, it was 13%. In 2021, it was 17%. Last year, it was 21%. So at this point, you know, we can ask ourselves, you know, what would the inflation rate be in 2024 if we continue to print money like we're doing right now, instead of moving from consumption to production? Um, Peter Obi talked about how containers that are shipped to Nigeria return empty due to, you know, the lack of goods to export. And, you know, he said that even if we, even if 1.5 million containers enter Nigeria and they return with goods for exports at $20,000 per container, you know, we're looking at $30 billion that's, you know, being pumped into the economy. And when you convert you know, that amount to Naira using 500 as the exchange rate, you're looking at 15 trillion Naira being pumped into the economy, 
which is what about a third of you know uh or maybe i don't know slightly less of the uh, current debt which is 77 trillion you know and this is what i like to call common sense you know economics and it doesn't take a genius to understand this um since 2014 more than 7 million venezuelans have fled the country out of a population of 28.2 million so that is 25% of the country's population fled the country. So let's juxtapose that with Nigeria's um, current population, which is 200 million. So we're looking at 50 million Nigerians that are at risk of flee you know, fleeing the country if our economy collapses. You know, so are we confident that when Nigeria collapses, countries like Ghana, Cameroon, Togo and Bene will not close their borders? I mean, we all saw what happened in Egypt and Ethiopia. So I just wanted to say that, you know, if Peter Obi does not take over the reins of this country, you know, the country is is good as as doomed. And for those people who call themselves, you know, influencers who have been paid, you know, to parrot the narrative that, you know, maybe a Tinubu government will not be so bad. Maybe he will surprise us. You know, I just feel like you're deceiving yourselves because a man who has no control of his thoughts, someone who relies on people, you know, whispering, talking points to him. A man who has a track record of drug trafficking, fraud, money laundering, God for that reason, ethnic bigotry, corruption, perjury, a Muslim Muslim ticket, a man whose economic plan to save Nigeria is to print more money. You know, you have to be delusional to think he can actually do any good um, for the country. And I'm going to end my submission um, with this. I feel like every day Nigerians should actually thank God that a man like Peter Obi, you know, was courageous enough um, to run for president. Because imagine if our only options were, you know, Atiku and, you know, the narcotics trafficker, um, Tinubu. Um, so we must ensure that we focus on the tribunal, make sure that, you know, they are on their toes and ensure that they do the right thing. Um, because the alternative is 50 million Nigerian refugees and, you know, 200,000 Naira, for a bag of rice, that is if you're lucky to even find rice to buy. And at this point, I'll yield my mic. Thank you.